Tombstone, Arizona Territory, August 23, 1883. Favorite Collins, hold it. You're under arrest. Now hold on, Sheriff. What for? Murder. The express agent in Pantano. Where's your buddy Ellis? Well, you stand fast, Hollister. <laughs> Thanks, mister. My name's Hoyt, Jake Hoyt. Surprise a lawman of your reputation will get yourself mousetrapped. Get going. Settle down. Sure, sure. Look, Charlie. I fell for the oldest trick in the books. I got mouse trapped. Well, you weren't the first one. Wild Bill Hickok got careless too, and look what happened to him. Yeah, I shot in the back. Lucky that fellow Hoyt was there to get Ellis for you. You don't live very long being just lucky, Charlie. Yeah, I guess you owe your life to him. Yeah. You know, I don't know this fellow Hoyt. I guess I ought to be grateful to him. I don't think he's going to let me forget this. Ah, I'm going to get some dinner. Yeah. My name's Radcliffe. I own the place. How are you? I think you heard mine. You're mighty handy with that. Your cub lawman got himself all jammed up. Somebody had to do something. Had some experience as a peace officer? The Dakotas, Wyoming. Do you mind telling me why you came to Tombstone? My specialty is tame and tough towns. I want the sheriff's job. Suppose you were the sheriff here. How would you have handled that business? Well, you've gunned those two killers right away. Been ready for the third. Save the county the expense of a trial. Other guns around here think twice before tangling with me. Well, the word would get around. Well, if a lawman wants to enforce the peace, he's got to prove he's tougher than the town. How do you feel about working along with other city officials? No lawman can lone wolf it. We think alike, Hoyt. I happen to be one of the county commissioners, and I'm concerned about crime in this town. You need a man who can do a real job for you. People do say I guarantee results. I believe you would make a good sheriff. I'll take the matter up with the other commissioners. We do think alike. Oh, Hoyt, I feel it's only fair to tell you that we may have trouble from Harris Claiborne, the editor of the Epitaph. He's a solid Hollister man. Well, Mr. Radcliffe. Yes? Yeah? Why not give the editor the story of how I saved Hollister's life? Why, start him thinking. You'll be sheriff. What's going on here? Nothing's going on now. Hoyt just took care of it. That man Hoyt sure handled Ellis. I was there. Some people are saying he might make a good sheriff. No, he almost lost Hollister. Might be a real good idea to keep a man like Hoyt around. Yeah. Good morning, Radcliffe. Good story on Jake Hoyt. It was a fine job of reporting. Well, thank you, Homer. The more people would back up the law like Hoyt did, we might have less crime in Tombstone. I'm glad to hear that, Harris. It makes what I have to say a lot easier. Oh? I want to talk to you about our law enforcement problem. 
Well, go on. Well, Hollister's not measuring up. You're dead wrong, Radcliffe. If Hollister hadn't had to twist your tail a couple of times, you wouldn't be so prejudiced. I think he's doing a fine job against big odds. There's nothing personal in my feeling why I think Hollister would make a first-rate deputy under a man like Jake Hoyt. A deputy? I spoke to Hoyt, and he's interested. Well, you had no right to do that. Not without consulting the other commissioners. I'm a lawyer. Don't talk to me about my rights. If I want to speak up against if Hollister... If you have any complaints against me, Mr. Radcliffe, bring them here. All right, I will. Three weeks ago, a stage was attacked and a driver was killed. Everybody figures a man named Al Coakley did it. And you haven't arrested Al him. Al Coakley can't be found. I got bulletins out for him. Jay Coit would have had him behind bars the day it happened. I'm calling on you for action, Hollister. I'd better get it. He's found a new candidate for your job. And he intends to push it. Well, looks like Hoyt's quite a hero around town. I printed what happened, Clay. Yeah. And now I suspect he may have shot Ellis just to make a name for himself. But I can't print that. Not without proof. We do know that Radcliffe always wanted a sheriff he could control. Clay, just how much do you know about this, Hoyt? I'll let you know. Sorry, gents. All right. Hello, Alistair. I'd like to talk to you. Why not? Go ahead. Well, look, I'm not playing cards for fun. I'm working these days for Radcliffe. Oh, I didn't know you're taking a job dealing. Thought you're after a different one. Yeah, Sheriff. I'd be mighty good at it. Why don't you level, Hoyt? You killed Ellis to make a name for yourself, didn't you? Oh, that's ingratitude. Doesn't your conscience bother you? What about your conscience? Got none. Was left out when I was born. I'm gonna get you a job. You save yourself a heap of trouble by resigning. I mean, why is it so important to you? Well, Tombstone's the last of the wide open towns. I like the ring of it. Sheriff of Tombstone. Any other reason? Public demand. Mr. Ratcliffe's behind me 100%. <laughs> Mr. Ratcliffe's always wanted a sheriff he could run. If you're suggesting... I'm suggesting that you get out of Tombstone. You know, for your sake, Hollister, I hope it doesn't come to gunplay between us. Well, don't force it. You wouldn't have a chance. you got a conscience. I hope so. I saw that the other day when you didn't gun down those two. You've got to decide to kill. That slows you down. Now, you take me. I'm always ready to kill. Yeah. I got that impression. You've got to fight with your conscience whether or not to draw on a man. I don't. That gives me that big split-second edge. Well, you know, uh, facing fast guns like you is part of my job, and I'm still around. <laughs> I'll say one thing, Hollister. You don't scare easy. That's right. But if we do tangle, you'll be dead before your gun clears the holster. Well, we both know where we stand. Three bullets. made the rounds on Allen Street. Everything's quiet. Those bulletins I sent out brought results, Charlie. Yeah? Al Coakley's coming through. Coakley? Hmm? Noon stage. And maybe you can get a confession on that stage robbery. Yeah. I think I'll ride out to meet him. Take him off the stage outside of town. If there's gunplay, there's no use having innocent bystanders get hurt. You need another gun? Yeah. Right here. <laughs> See you. Table's closed. Table 
Those clothes will cash in your trips. Tucson just wired Hollister to take Al Coakley off the noon stage. How do you know? The telegraph office informed me. After all, I'm a commissioner. Why are you telling me? Hollister will pick him up. I just saw Hollister riding out of town, right at a time when he's needed most. And so I'm calling a meeting of the commission and demanding an immediate ouster for Hollister. Now hold off on that meeting. I'll haul Al Coakley off the stage. The duly constituted officer failed in his duty, so you were forced to make a citizen's arrest. What does this Coakley look like? According to the telegram, dark, square jaw, clean shaven, about six feet tall, lean, wearing a black suit. You sure got good connections. I hope the one I made with you isn't a mistake. Now relax, I'll make you a good sheriff. What time is it? About 12.30. Almost a half hour late. Not nervous, are you? I am. I hope we're doing the right thing. Well, if Hollister can't do his job, somebody's got to. You have to whistle. Keep on the tune. Spotted him? No. Nope. Dust her off a little, she'll be okay. Pay attention. That's what I'm doing. Hold it. Stand back, all of you. It's all right. Somebody get Deputy Rick. This man is a wanted criminal. Yeah, the man Hollister was afraid to face. Al Coakley. Charlie, I've had to print my share of grim stories in the epitaph. But this one stops them all. Al Coakley, Charlie. Log him up. Clay, while you were gone, Hoyt gunned down another man. Thought he was Coakley. What? Killed him as he stepped off the stage. You mean that Hoyt shot an innocent man? It was hard for me to believe, too, when Charlie first told me. Hoyt and Radcliffe met the stage. I guess they figured it was a chance to show you up by taking Coakley. They didn't know you were picking him up outside town. Why should they? Hoyt wouldn't understand taking an outlaw before he hit town. He'd want an audience. Well, the man was about Coakley's size. Yeah, that must have been George Butler. I got his identification when I stopped the stage. Anyhow, uh, why kill him? He was a traveling salesman, Harris. Unarmed. Why couldn't wait? He couldn't take the time to find out he had that gun out and he had to use it. How did Hoyt know that he was on that stage? I figure Radcliffe. He has his ways of getting information. Well, it's my job to protect lives, not to see him taken. An innocent man's dead because a gunslinger wants to be sheriff. Well, he's going to get his chance. seen him. Radcliffe? Nope. Mr. Radcliffe ain't in. Sheriff, I, I told you he ain't in. I, I thought he was out. Honester, I did what I did because I figured it was right. I know why you did it. It seemed to me Hoyt was the man who could stop crime in Tombstone. I made an honest mistake, that's Well, all. your mistake has already cost the life of one man. Believe me, Hollister, I regret that. Well, the account's not closed yet because the killing isn't over with. Unless Hoyt surrenders himself on a murder charge. Where is he? 
I don't know. You're lying. I tell you, I don't know. Well, I'll find him. I'll keep looking until I do. You can tell him that. Otis, come here. I tried to keep him out, Mr. Radcliffe. Get word to Hoyt. Tell him Hollister's out to get him. See, we've had enough gun play and tell him he's got to get out of town. Who is it? Hold it. Come in. Sheriff's gunning for you. Radcliffe wants you to leave town. Plan misfired, and that's enough for him, huh? Well, it's not enough for me. You mean you're going to shoot down the sheriff? Hollis is looking for me, isn't he? Yeah, but you can't. All right, he finds me. I kill him. Self-defense. Yeah, but Radcliffe said I'm you. I'm not were... taking orders from Radcliffe. With Hollis to dead, nobody argues with me. I get out. <laughs> Blake. Yeah, Charlie. It seemed to me if I were Hoyt, I'd hop the first stage out of town. Not him. Well, I checked it anyhow. No signs of him. Let me go along with you to take him in. Yeah. This is between him and me. <laughs> Right in? Yeah. You know Jake Hoyt? Yeah, I know him. I ought to. He won a lot of money off of me in the card game, and nobody's that lucky. Have you seen him lately? No. Hey, listen. If you do find him, good luck. good as this Hoyt with a gun? From all I hear, he's as good as they come. Faster than they? I hope not, because Hoyt's out of hiding. One of my printers just saw him down around 7th and Toughnut, heading up toward Allen. There ought to be something we can do. This is Clay's fight. He wants it this way. Yeah, I know. But he needs every edge he can get. At least we can tell him that Hoyt's out of hiding and ready to meet him. Point is to find Clay. Well, I figure we'll have two chances if we separate. You start with 3rd, and I'll head down 7th. We'll both keep doubling back toward Allen. For the first time in my life, I'm thinking of shooting a man in the back if I see Hoyt. Franklin, where are you going? Frankly, I'm trying to find Hoyt. I understand he's ready to kill Hollister. I intend to beg him not to carry this any farther. It's a little late for that.
yards out, on Allen Street. Where on Allen Street? Somewhere's around six by now, I guess. Probably coming along Allen this way. Thank you, Jerry. give you a chance to submit to arrest. Nobody's ever arrested me. I am too. You can try. Just remember that split second edge. Your edge is gone, Hoyt. Either you're coming in or I'm going to draw on you. Make your decision. Still breathing. See that he's got taken care of. Doc Cunningham says Hoyt will live. There'll be a murder charge and he'll need a lawyer. You mean me, the answer is no. It seems to me, Radcliffe, you and Hoyt were partners. At least that's the way it's going to appear in my editorial. You're writing an editorial about this? That's right. Maybe this will start the town taking action against you. And remind everybody that it takes more to make a good peace officer than just a fast gun. Yeah. But you wouldn't be a peace officer long without one. Tombstone, Arizona Territory, March 24, 1884. Thank you. You've been very pleasant company, Mr. Domingue. If you're going to be in Tombstone long, Feel free to call on me. I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon, madame. Good afternoon. <laughs> What's going on, mister? These pigs tried to insult me. Next time, I will not be so tolerant. Tori. Demarney might be a stranger to Tombstone, but he certainly wasn't any stranger to the gambling tables. I had the feeling I'd heard the name before somewhere. Heard it or read it. Play these. Two and make them good ones. So I'll take one. Your bet. Mm, Fifty pounds. I call. Straight flush. Ten high. You are not a gracious loser. 
You're not only a cheat, you're a crawbilly coward. Don't let your temper bury you, my friend. We seem to have a seat open. Care to sit in, Sheriff? No, thank you. It's a little steep. Too bad. I had a feeling you would be quite an opponent. My deal, I believe. I've looked through every wanted bulletin in the file. There's just nothing on him. I didn't think there would be. He's not the ordinary kind found in the wanted circulars. You sure are serious about this campaign, Harris. We've got to do something about this town before it's taken over by gamblers and fortune hunters and gunslingers. Yeah, I know, but De Morney has to step out of line before the law does anything. This isn't just De Morney. It's that old element. Tombstone's sitting on a hill of silver. So every card sharp and killer has to come here. Well, the epitaph plans to make it tough on them. I'll back your play. Wish they'd answer from St. Louis. St. Louis? Yeah, the morning had tags on his baggage. Hotel Danton, St. Louis. I wired Johnson to the dispatch. He'll let me know if they've got anything on him. You sure do seem positive about this de morning. Yeah. Call it intuition if you like. I just know he's up to no good. When he isn't gambling, he's playing the dashing continental to Carol Thayer and her Soledad mind. Yeah. We've been running about 80,000 a month. The deeper we go, the more the grade improves. You're an amazing woman, Carol. I don't imagine any woman could amaze you, Raoul. Oh, you're not any woman. Just like I'm not any man. People like us are different, Carol. As different as high grade ore from plain dust. I'm glad I went to St. Louis. If I had been your husband, I would name this after you. Silver meant more to him than I did. It finally killed him. He wouldn't wait for the engineers to supervise a shoring in the lower level. He did it himself with a crew of Indians. He collapsed on them. That was two years ago. And you have been alone since then. You're not made for loneliness. You're a woman who should be surrounded with love and gaiety. I make no pretenses to you. All I can offer to you is my name and my love. If I could, I would lay the whole world at your feet. Paris, Vienna, whole Europe. A world of culture that would appreciate you for the lovely being that you are. I would make you forget this burned out, arid country and people. I must go home, Raoul. Bet twenty dollars hard cash. He wears silk underdrawers. Any man that wears perfume and lace has got to wear silk drawers. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, sure be interesting to find out. But I ain't gonna tangle that pig sticker of his. Not me. It's it worth to find out for sure. Huh? I seen fancy pants ride out of here a couple hours ago toward the Thayer's place. Give me ten dollars and I'll be back in fifteen minutes for the pair of his drawers. Is it a deal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put two dollars in. Here's a couple. Who else will chip in? I got five. There's a dollar. <laughs> I got two over here. Oh, I think we're wasting our money. He'll never do it. Yeah.
about the wounded boy, Sheriff. Oh. I had no way of knowing he was so young. I wish I could believe that. I'd like to talk longer, but a lady's expecting me. Oh. Well, get on your way. I wouldn't want to hold up your romance. Au revoir, Sheriff. well known to gambling establishments, St. Louis and New Orleans. Notorious duelist known to have Killed four men in pistol duels. Claims to be a French nobility. No proof in evidence. Advise you steer clear. Hope this helps. Johnson, dispatch. What are you going to do about this, Harris? I'm going to print it. Let the people at Tombstone know exactly what DeMarney is. Well, that's fine, but what about Carol Thayer? She should be the first to read this. DeMarney's after the Soledad, and she hasn't sense enough to see it. I don't think she's going to appreciate having the whole territory know that De Morney's made a fool out of her. That's what'll happen if you print this. Well, what do you suggest? Let me show it to her. De Morney will be on the first stage out. All right. I hope it works. She's a pretty stubborn girl. I'm sorry you had to hear it from me, but it's better that way than reading it in the paper. How dare you? A man couldn't love me for myself. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Listen, Carol, You listen. listen. Do you think I'm one of your dried-up tombstone drabs? Look at me. I'm a woman, a very pretty woman. You're a beautiful woman. I don't have to buy any man. I didn't say that. I know all about Raoul. The men he's killed and the things he's had to stoop to because of people like you. How many men have you killed, Sheriff? And since when is gambling a crime? Guess I made a mistake coming here. You did. Now get out of here. St. Louis reports on De Morney. The fair city of Tombstone is unwilling to host to one Raoul De Morney. Now maybe he won't find the picking so easy in Tombstone. might drive him out of town? I doubt it. His kind don't scare very easy. Speak of the devil. I rather expected to find you here, Sheriff. What do you want? I think you know. Do you consider yourself a gentleman, Mr. Clyburn? What are you getting at, De Morney? I think I know what he means, Clay. Yes. I consider myself a gentleman. Oh, that pleases me. Accept my insult. What? No, Clay. You have my challenge, sir. You don't have to do this, Harris. It is a matter of honor. I accept. With great pleasure. Unfortunately, I will have to act as my own second. <laughs> Due to the shortage of gentlemen in Tombstone. 
I assume the sheriff will act for you, sir. What are you after? Another murder? Murder? No murder. There's no law against dwelling in Arizona. Dwelling is a part of culture. Man against man with equal weapons. With a distinct advantage to a killer trained in the use of a dueling pistol. An art, a refinement, a sophistication foreign to you people. Foreign to the four men you killed? I should know better than to expect you to know the niceties of gentlemanly combat. Your kind is better suited to brawling with your fists. Or, or shooting behind protection of wagon wheels. You all through now? Mm-hmm. Maybe you'd like to slap my face with your little gloves. I should be glad to oblige you after I dispose of Mr. Clyburn. You're pretty sure of yourself. Hmm. Positive. If you will act as Mr. Clyburn's second, I will make arrangements now. As a challenge partner, I choose pistols at ten paces. Perhaps you can suggest the location and time. Tomorrow morning at six o'clock, San Pedro Wash. Excellent. Good night, gentlemen. I've got an idea, Harris. It might work. Well, what do you mean, Clay? Well, as your second, I could substitute for you. It's perfectly within the dueling code. I know that much about it. I'm fighting my own battles, Clay. There'll be no substitution. Look, Harris, you're, you're a fine shot. But this is like putting a good fighter in the ring with a professional boxer. I can't let any man put me in the position to be called a coward. You're no coward. Thanks. Since the weapons are mine, you might wish to try a shot before. Go on, Harris. Give you an idea how they balance. That might be a good target. If you are kind enough to reload, we can get on with this business. It is not too late. I'm willing to forget the whole matter if you print a public retraction and apology. I challenged you, Demorani. There will be no retractions or apologies. As you wish. After you. The first choice is yours, sir. At the word march, you'll each take five paces to my count. At the fifth pace, you can turn and fire at will. Are you ready? Ready. March. One. Two. Three, four, five. I'm not ready to shoot. Perhaps tomorrow or another day, I'll let you know. What are you trying, De Morning? Very simple. Mr. Clyburn owes me return of fire. I have the right to collect any time I choose. It's part of Code Duello. He's right, Clay. He's got to call on me whenever he wants it. 
but see that you remember that. You were wonderful. Oh, there is no satisfaction to take his miserable life. Good morning. What now, Sheriff? You use every trick in the book, don't you? Trick? Mm -hmm. That black suit against the trees, the way you stand to present the smallest possible target. Mr. Clyburn could have done the same. But you counted on his not thinking of it. He's never fought a duel before. How many have you fought, Demoni? Oh, you yeah, are beginning to tire me, Sheriff. You really stack the deck, don't you, gambler? What did you say? No wonder you let Clyburn take the test shot. You knew then that he couldn't hit you at a distance. If he'd proved to be an extremely good duelist, you would have fired before he had a chance to, wouldn't you? And another thing. You knew that if you killed him, you'd have me to fight next. All this talk about being a cultured gentleman makes it easy for you to weasel out of a duel that might go against you, doesn't it? Thought you'd never get around to that. Are you a gentleman? At your service, monsieur. Nobody can talk to me like that. I'll use my own iron. That gun against the most delicate weapon the world knows? Well, I guess that's what it is. It's the new world against yours. Your world's old, Damani. One of honor. One bullet, of course. That's the code. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we'll fight your way. And mine. Are you ready? March. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. You didn't figure on, Demorny. You turn sidewards to give a small target. Out here we crouch. It would have been right between your eyes. But it wasn't. Now I owe you a bullet. All right. What are you waiting for? Get it over with. No. Don't you worry, my dear. He hasn't got the stomach for it. You're right, Demorny. I can't shoot a man in cold blood. Either you knew that or you got more courage than I gave you credit for. I don't imagine you'll ever know, Sheriff. I'll know soon enough, because I'm not going to kill you. Pull it! I didn't say I wasn't going to take my shot. There's nothing in the dueling code that says I have to shoot to kill. Now, do you know what I'm getting at? I don't know what you mean. Well, you're quite a card player, in addition to being an excellent pistol shot. But I've got a proposition for you. Go on. First of all, forget that you owe the editor a bullet. Secondly, get out a tombstone today. Or? Or I put a bullet through your right wrist. I don't understand you. Without your right hand, you're as good as dead, De Morning. No more duels, no more cheating at cards. You might even have to work. You're an uncivilized savage. To your way of thinking, maybe we are uncivilized. But this is a new country out here, and we've got new rules. Take my advice. Get used to them or get out. You've got ten seconds to make up your mind. Five seconds. up the morning. I accept your terms. Sorry, my dear. I'm afraid in my own selfish way I have grown to love you. I'll go with you. Nobody can stop me. 
I guess I'll never understand women. Does anybody? Mrs. Stay and I are leaving Tombstone to be married. Will you accept my hand in sincere apology? I want to try living in this new world of yours. You said it has a new set of rules. That's right. Well, surely there must be a room for apology in those rooms. Understanding comes hard sometimes, but it's worth it in the end. Tombstone, Arizona Territory, the morning of July 29, 1881. Well, sir, you got enough grub and gear there to start a store of your own. What are you going after, stranger? Store of my own. Uh, <laughs> you, um, you been on the trail long? A while. Coming from San Francisco. What made you say that? You're Glade Rafferty. You wanted to bank robbery and murder in San Francisco. I wouldn't. The circular said there were two others. Eugene Slater and a Martin Warren. Where are they? Dead. <laughs> Slater and Martin die. The desert, coming over from Tucson. Thirst. Didn't bother you? I kept my mind on other things. I thought you gentlemen died of thirst on the desert. The afternoon of July 29, 1881. Clay Hollister hadn't checked in at his office since early morning. His whereabouts was a mystery. You know where you are, Hollister? Yeah. Three miles south of Tombstone. Old Wedlock Road. Do you know why you're still alive? I'll help you. If you want to get across the border to Mexico. Without taking a regular trail. And without running into Apaches. We can't do it alone, Hollister. We don't know the country. But you do. Now you know why you're still alive, don't you, Hollister? Slater was against bringing you along. You should have listened to him. It isn't going to work. You're going to be our guide, Sheriff. Why? 
keep you from shooting me? You're going to shoot me anyway when we get to Mexico. Probably. But I think you'll come along just the same. Why should I? The tin badge. If you're a sheriff, Hollister, it's the sheriff's duty to arrest people like us. As long as you're alive, you've got a chance of doing just that. It's a slim chance, to be sure. Oh, I don't know. Three to one isn't so very bad odds. Three to zero, Hollister. You don't have any bullets, just guns. We figured it wouldn't look good if you run into somebody and you weren't wearing any. Go on, check them. I'll take your word for it. We even stole a horse for you. You ought to be grateful. Show the proper spirit. All right, Sheriff, you're the lead man. Next stop, Sonora, Mexico. You know how far that is? It's only about 50 miles. A broiling desert. We're packed for it. Enough? More than enough. Food, water, happy. I'll be happier when we get to Sonora. All right, Sheriff, let's go. I'll ride behind him. You even think tricky and you're dead. I guess he means it, Sheriff. Like I said, fate is against this whole thing. I'd mean it even if the plan were my own idea. Now get. Take turns, stand and watch. Except you, Hollister. You get to sleep right through. Tonight. <laughs> the evening of July 29, in Tombstone, concern for Sheriff Hollister began to grow. There was no clue to his disappearance. In the water. He's crazy. It was open, pouring out. He must have done it. Shut up.
How about it? Did you have anything to do with it? How could I? Wasn't your boy watching me? What'd he want to touch the water for? To make it harder on us. Make it harder on himself, too. He's half lizard. He doesn't need much water. I tell you, Glade, I didn't touch the water. He did. Either way, you're wrong. Either you tried to steal our water, or you let the man you were supposed to be watching do it. Now go see how much water we lost. Better than half empty. You know, personally, I think you did it. Rafferty, nobody, even if he's all lizard, can live on the desert without water. You could. You know all about the desert. You know how a man without water can survive by squeezing the moisture out of the heart of a cactus plant. Well, I know that too, Hollister. And even if your plan had worked, you couldn't have won. And you won't win. Now go get some sleep. July 30, 1881. Hollister's deputies made a thorough search of the tombstone area. Nobody had seen the missing sheriff. gone that way? No. You sure? Positive. You better be. Pretty smart, aren't you? What is it? A writer. He was heading us right for him. Well, I didn't see him until just now. You were a liar. Take it easy, Slater. What trouble can one man cause us? A patrol, even. Well, we're not hundred men now. We're members of the sheriff's posse. Right, Sheriff? He could take a chance and give us away. Have the other man killed? I don't think he'd do that. Howdy, right, man. Hello. Don't be unsociable, Sheriff. Howdy, right, Sheriff. Name's Mitchell, prospector. Hollister, glad to meet you. Did you see a lone rider back there, Mr. Mitchell? We're looking for a tall man and a sore old mare. No, I ain't seen a soul since I left Tombstone. Tombstone? Tombstone's back there. Uh, I'm afraid you turned around, son. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> it's a tenderfoot. Well, I guess we better be riding, Sheriff. Nice to have met up with you, Mr. Mitchell. Well, same here, man. Well, adios. <laughs> He'll be out of earshot in a minute. The old man's out of earshot. What are we waiting for? Not a thing. We're not gonna shoot him. Why not? We still need him to get to Mexico. Are you crazy? He almost brought us right back to Tombstone. He emptied out half our water. How many chances does he get? As many as we give him, I guess. Losing the water was your fault, Warren. Being led around the circle was everybody's fault. 
Letting him live is going to be your fault. I say he goes right now. And I say you get no say. I thought we were partners. You thought wrong. And you're thinking wrong now. Better step back, Sheriff. He's a bad shot. You can still have another chance later. At what? Hanging? No thanks. You're the one that's making the mistake, Rafferty. Bringing him along. He's got a bag full of tricks. I say we kill him. You said that before. He's dead. What do you think we should do about the Sheriff, Warren? Whatever you say, Glade. Well, I say he should lead us to Sonora, Mexico. What do you say? I say the odds are getting better. It's two to zero now. Upset you, Warren? Not if it isn't mine. Can I have some water? Later. Okay, Hollister. That's enough. Up. Hold it. Get out. Back over there. Warren. Yeah. Watch him. Bury him. You help him. Hollister. Take a look at that hand. What's the matter? So much fuss about one little bullet. You got lots more to play with, haven't you? Sure. down there. All right, that's good enough. Nobody will find him now. We'll take the extra horse along to lighten the supply load. Let's go. South. July 31, 1881. Bulletins on Hollister were sent to peace officers throughout the Southwest. Still no clues. What's that? What's what? In your hand. Open it. Didn't we do that once before? Well, let's do it again. Let me have your guns. One at a time.
I'll move one. You're kind of shaky, aren't you? Come on, you'll still have a gun. All right, Sheriff. Might be interesting to see how well you can shoot. Obliged. All right, let's go. August 1, 1881. Clay Hollister had been missing for four days. Clay! Keep getting better for me, don't they? There's still one to zero. One to one. I found that bullet you dropped at Slater's grave. It's in my gun now. The right one. You're lying. You're gonna have to prove that. You got one of two choices now. You can either surrender to me, or you can draw. Which one's it gonna be? Suppose you do have that bullet. You've only got one shot. That's true. But you can't find out unless you go for your gun, can you? What have you got to lose by bluffing? We're almost to Mexico. You know I'll kill you anyhow when I don't need you. Yeah, that's one side of the story. Other side is I've got the bullet. The bullet's in the gun. Well? There's $50,000 in that saddlebag. You can have it. It's all for yourself. I don't call your bluff. You can take me in. Turn around. Had to find out. Report reached me at the epitaph that Clay Hollister had been seen riding into town. Have you been, Clay? I'll tell it. Well, doing what? Riding. Well, you ought to let somebody know where you are. Things have been happening around here. You got a telegram from Tucson. Oh? Yeah, Charlie opened it. Says that three men wanted for bank robbery and murder are heading this way. 
Well, the three men would be riding three horses, wouldn't you say? Well, of course they'd be riding three horses. What do you expect them to do, walk here? What's the matter with you? Quite a gunfight. One bullet. Tombstone, Arizona Territory, July 13, 1882. <laughs> Shovel, I'll stand guard. Look. Silver. August 22, 1882. The epitaph heralded another fabulous silver strike. For some, it was a moment of rejoicing. For others, the celebration was bitter, due to a trick of fate that had moved in to make it so. I'm going to ask you one more time. I want my father's share of the strike. What share? Old Matt had no share. The Indians got him before we struck it. You had an agreement. Now I'm going to get what's mine. You going to give it? Or am I going to take it? Ollie's right. He deserves it. Oh, I told you before, old Matt had no share. Belongs to Billy and me. Nobody's pushing us out. Yeah. Get going. That hot head of yours is going to get you in trouble. Ah, oh, now, hold it! Come on down to my office. We'll talk it over. When? Now. Or you're going to let him get away with this. You're going to let Steelman go on right under your nose without doing anything about but it, is that Carter right? Carter and Billy are taking anything that belongs to you. They'll go to jail. They claim that death ended the partnership. You got anything to prove that it didn't? Listen. Anybody but those two would honor that partnership. Is there anything in writing? I don't know. If there is, I haven't found it. Well, you show me something in writing, and I'll enforce your claim legally. Till then, there's nothing I can do. All right. But I'll get what belongs to me, and I'll get it without your help. Ollie. I've never seen him like this before. Ollie's right, you know. Sure he's right. But not legally. I was speaking about the moral right. That's what makes it tough. They're both right. One of them legally and one of them morally. I'll go up and talk to Carter and Billy.
Where'd he go? Maybe I got him. Drop your guns. Oh, we didn't know it was you, Sheriff. Doesn't matter who it was. There's free land around here. Anybody's got a right on it. Not here. We got a claim. Nobody's got a right here but us. Well, how much do what do you want up here? This is Matt's grave, huh? Yeah, yeah. We, we dug the mine over there so Matt wouldn't be bought of none. Got to show proper respect for the dead. You could show more respect by allowing his family in here to tend the grave. Oh, no. Then they get the idea they come up here any time. Anything wrong with that? They want to come here because they think they own a piece of this strike. Well, they don't. Carter, everybody in Tombstone thinks Ali and his wife should have Matt's share. If I caught that Apache arrow, Matt wouldn't be giving any shares to my family. Matt wasn't that kind. You're wrong, Carter, and you know it. I knew Matt. You got a warrant to arrest or something? Nope. Then get out. You got no right here either. There's going to be trouble. You can stop it. If there's any killing ahead, I'm ready for it. Just don't step out of line, that's all. Get to work. Maybe... Maybe what? Maybe we should give Ollie some. Wouldn't hurt nothing, you know. This little bit. You gotta fight for what you get, Billy. Nobody gives a hang for you and me. You gotta take when the time comes. The time's now. Yeah, you gotta take. Nobody ever gave me nothing, ever. You gotta take. <laughs> going out? That's right. Carter's at the Crystal Palace. I'm going there. What are you going to do? Get what's mine. She have to do anything about it. But, Ollie, we've been all through this and you promised... I didn't make the rules. Carter did. He took. I'm going to take back. But, Ollie, there must be another way. Now, don't you go nagging at me, Beth. It's the only thing I can do. <laughs> Gone to the Crystal Palace to force Carter into a fight. When did he leave? Just now. None of this would have happened if he'd done the right thing in the first place. Easy, Mrs. Williams. Nothing else Mr. Hollister could have done and still uphold the law. Oh, oh, Ollie, we don't want no trouble in here. Okay. Don't we go along? No, keep her here. It's your last chance, Carter. You ain't safe here, boy. You better go home. Duh. Three cards. I'll kill you, Carter. I'll kill you for this. I shot him in self-defense, Sheriff. Uh, what's your story, Harry? Was it self-defense? He's a no-good rat. No better than a claim jumper. But Ollie forced it. Anybody else got another burger? Ollie! Oh, Ollie! Well, what are you men going to do about this? Mrs. Williams, I ask you not to interfere.
Now, wait a minute. I'm unarmed. Hold it. Give me back my gun, Sheriff. All right. Break it up. What kind of a lawman have we got here? Get going. I'll never make it. They'll follow me. I suggest you men stay here. You only think you've had trouble before. August 23, 1882. Angry miners formed on the streets of Tombstone. They were convinced that one of their group had been wronged. What's going on? What's going on where? What's all the excitement? Is there excitement? With her husband desperately wounded, Beth Williams succumbed to the spirit of the mob. Looks bad, Clay. It is bad. We don't need your protection, Hollister. Just a peaceful meeting. Just talk. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with talk. Free to make, ain't it? And free to listen to. You plan to force your way in here? Depends. <laughs> protect his rights, well, it's time something was done about it. What chance do we have if the sheriff refuses to back us up? How long are we going to stand for it? When will something be done? Colleen, I need your help. Can we count on you? Mrs. Williams. I'd like a word with you alone. You can speak freely in front of the men. Do you have any idea of what you're doing? I know exactly what I'm doing. Ollie's no match for Carter's guns. So you're getting a mob to back Ollie? You can put it that way if you like. But if you'd done your job in the beginning, none of this would have happened. You're beating that tune to death. My job is the law. Yeah, protecting claim jumpers. How much is he paying you, Hollister? Maybe you're getting mad share. Oh. Hate mobs and I hate murder. I've seen enough and I've had enough. I'll shoot anybody that leads a mob to murder. I've sounded out a few men to act as deputies. Any luck? Trying to get deputies for this job is like trying to grab an eel in a bucket of lard. I couldn't get anybody. What about Stan Hoare and Art Smith? Wouldn't touch it. They're getting uglier by the minute. Isn't there any way to stop this? You got any suggestions? Um, I don't know. When... When respectable people start taking the law into their own hands, I... I must have messed up somewhere. Oh, don't blame yourself. What you face would tax the wisdom of Solomon. Why is it the law so often seems to be on the wrong side? Well, if they just give the law a chance it'd catch up. You can't stop a mob with just a shotgun. There's got to be a way. And I got to find it. With all the land around here, it's... Too bad a man can't find a piece of ground to rest in without everybody fighting over it. 
What did you say? I said it's too bad a man can't find a piece of ground to rest in without everybody fighting over it. Move it up, Chambers. Move it up. There may be a law. It's a race against time. Chambers, open up! Well, there's something new for you up with the roosters. Well, I'm a newspaper man, Clay. I can't sleep with my town about to blow up under me without trying to do something about it. Did you? Beth is the fuse. I thought if I could talk some sense into her, things might simmer down. Did you talk sense? Well, I thought I did, but she wouldn't listen. She just came back from a circuit of the diggings. She's been stirring up every miner within ten miles of Tombstone. We've got to find some way to stop her. Well, I think Chambers and I did. You found something after I left last night? Two o'clock this morning. We came up with a territorial law that states that any open ground on which a man is buried belongs to him for 20 feet in all directions. Good for you. And I got a court order evicting Carter. Do you think she'll listen? Only a fool wouldn't. I hope she's not a fool. <laughs> Where are you going? See Ollie. Is this the time to be seeing a sick man? Shouldn't you try to stop this mob? That's why I'm going to see Ollie. What was he trying to do? Join your mob? Yes. Why did you keep him in bed? I tried, but... You tried. You tried like you tried to stop that bunch in the street outside? I didn't try to stop them then, and I won't try now. Mrs. Williams, you're supposed to be a responsible citizen. Who... Just a minute. Who are you to talk about responsible citizens? At least I'm trying to protect my husband. Well, that's what your protection's gotten you. And what has your high office gotten? I've got a court order to evict Carter and Billy. I don't believe it. I dug up an Arizona law that states that a grave and 20 square feet around it belong to the heirs of anyone buried there. Well, what good will that do? You go out and tell that mob that I'm going to run Carter off. Carter will laugh at your court order, and it'll take a mob to run him off. You won't even try. No. Mrs. Williams, can't you see I'm trying to help you? All I can see is the help you're giving those thieves. You're being a fool. There's going to be trouble and only you can stop it. And if you don't, men will get killed. You think they'll be coming pretty soon? How do I know? You think you and me can handle a whole bunch of them? We get enough of them to wrestle run like rats. We'll keep working. Mr. Clyburn. We're going to see justice done. Justice never came from taking the law into your own hands. Wait. Clay Hollister rode out to the mine. He's your lawman. Let him handle this. He's been handling it. And that's why my husband was nearly killed. And we're going to get Carter. Now listen to me. Every one of you listen. If Carter is killed, every one of this mob Every single one of you is guilty of murder. 
premeditated mob murder. What you don't know is that the sheriff now has a legal right to get all his claim for him. Carter will never give in. I'd at least give the sheriff time to try it his way. Give him time. That's the least you can do. All right. Eviction order. What's that mean? It means that the grave and 20 feet around it belong to the heirs of Matt Williams. That's the law. You'll have to get out. It's a trick. It's no trick, Carter. I'm trying to do you a favor. There's a mob on its way out here to get you. Oh, well, why don't you stop them then? I will. As soon as you leave. You mean they're going to take everything? You'll get your share. Just move out before I have to bury you next to Matt. After 15 years? Fighting desert, hunger Indians. I've been making my strike. No, I'm going to keep it all. <laughs> Try to do a job and you end up taking a life. Time's up, Mr. Clyburn, and so is Carter's. Let's go. Wait, this is wrong. You wanted blood, didn't you? You got it. What's the matter? Why so quiet? You'll do anything for silver, won't you? You'll get your share, Mrs. Williams. Billy will get his. If he's got any family, they'll get theirs. I guess I'll run this notice in the paper again. Oh, no answer from Carter's heirs yet, huh? Nope. And we've given him every chance to come forward and claim his share of the strike. Either Carter has no heirs, or they're too ashamed to come forward and admit it. Mr. Clyburn? Well, hello, Charlie. Uh, Clay saw Ollie and Beth up with their claim today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's trying to get up to courage and wanted to know... What did she want to know, Charlie? Well, if it would be all right if she came in to apologize. In time, when I forget there was a needless killing. I wonder if she's to blame. Whether it's silver or gold or anything that smells like money. There's always a scent of death about it in Tombstone. <laughs> 